Um, I'm Merlijn Twaalfhoven. I composed this composition. It was just a small fragment that you just heard. And um, actually, at this point, the audience at that day was very confused. The tuning of the orchestra actually gradually transformed into the music itself. But the um, audience is used to a very clear separation between tuning and a performance or between yeah, the artwork, uh, like things that happen on a stage or in the hall, or things that are the performance or the intermission. It's very clearly separated. Even a concert hall is, of course, a separation from the rest of the town. Well, actually, this separation in art is pretty recent. And it's maybe just 100 years ago that we started to build uh, museums, uh, concert halls. Actually, art used to be part of life. It used to be part of ritual. It was something rather to experience, to participate. And if we were confronted with things in, uh, already since ages, the things that we cannot r explain in a rational way, we created rituals. And the rituals give a place for daily mysteries, birth or love or fertility or the change of seasons. But today we don't need rituals much more. We have our brains to uh, explain the world around us. And we pay professionals to express feelings. That's what we call art. And art is not reality. Artificial means not real. But emotions and feelings are real. Art is actually a great tool to gain access beyond the surface. Art can say things that you cannot say in words. I mean, if you can say it, you don't need to dance it. Um, art materializes ambiguity. It, uh, it finds forms for the non-logic, for the paradox, for the subconscious. Why separate that from life? It's part of life. Um, for example, uh, if you go to a museum, today in contemporary art, anything can be art. When an artist decides it should be in a museum, it's art. But if you happen to adore uh, the electrical socket or the fire extinguisher next to the door, you make a fool out of yourself. Um, why is that? Because well, I don't know. Fire extinguishers are actually very beautiful, also very symbolic. They're nice and red. But you're not supposed to have feelings outside of the frame. And of course, you have frames around paintings, but also you can call uh, the stage a frame or the curtain that goes up. It's a frame. Also, an applause can be a frame. So we create safe places to express our feelings because we're very shy. Um, we even like to make it dark in a cinema or in, the, in a theater. And when the music is over, when the light is on, also you switch back to a kind of rational behavior. You stop the feeling section. Um, I have a picture. Let's pray for the picture. Yeah. Maybe it will come. I keep trying. Yeah, there he is. This is Sverrir Hermansson from a very small village in the north of Iceland. And I rehearsed the name of the village, but it's impossible. Um, he had the courage to put normal life, uh, to adore small things from uh, regular life. And he put them, he created a museum of little objects. Um, well, I'm sure this is not art, but it touched me more than uh, Cezanne or Leonardo. Um, in some way, I think this man, he put uh, regular life in a museum in order to make us see it, to make us look at it. Well, um, of course, you have also artists who place their art in the world. Ah, there we go. Um, well, this has no function whatsoever, that's clear. So it can only be art. 
Um, so that's very easy. We uh, don't need to get confused. We don't need to investigate it. We just place a label. We say, OK, art, and we can continue. Actually, I don't see many people there to watch it or to experience something. Who has been here? Good. 20, 25. How long did you stay? An hour. OK. Well, people stayed for hours. Even they returned for days. This artwork, it was hard to place a label. The boundaries between the art and the life were not clear. So people were there, and they just observed or they experienced. I mean, OK. Um, I have something that I consider very shocking. It's uh, something you might have seen it on YouTube. Yes. Okay. This is actually Joshua Bell, one of the best violin players of today. He is playing in the subway in Washington. And there is no one to realize that it's, well, it's the, the best art we have in the world. And even he doesn't succeed to break through our expectations. And it's a really serious matter because our expectations, it, it looks like we're mechanical. We follow just our pattern. What we don't expect, we don't perceive. Even when beauty is in front of your eyes, apparently we don't see it. Well, um, if you want to change the world, and let's do that, um, you need to break through the expectations of people. Because um, only when you break expectations, when you create confusion, then you create openness. And openness is the only place where contact can take place. Um, and just words, communicating in words, is not making contact. Well, today, many great words Big inventions, good ideas. Um, but sometimes I was worried. I mean, if our cleverness would uh, decide what we do, why would there be climate change, for example, or why would we smoke? Uh, I'm so sure that it's actually uh, emotions, feelings, things that we cannot explain in a rational way that really motivate us, that really drive us. And uh, that subconscious world, we try to cover it up with rational construction, and we think we are in charge with our brain. But we fool ourselves, um, and we fool others. We are now in a physical proximity, and it's easy to communicate a lot more than just words, of course. I have my gestures, my insecurity, my... Uh, well, a lot of things between my words. And if you want to know something from the world far away, for example, from a different culture, what do you do if you want to have information? You watch the news. And actually, well, you have to choose about many channels or a newspaper or a internet. And these channels have to make money, so they fight for your attention. And in order to get your attention, they must be exceptional. And news items communicate spectacular things, or exceptional things, or bizarre or violent things. They create a reality that is not at all the same as what is really happening in these places far away. Um, I was in, uh, the first time, I was in Ramallah on the West Bank. And actually, I saw the children coming out of school, uh, strawberries that were ready to eat and uh, for sale, and posters of a contemporary dance festival in the street. 
And I was so happy. Um, why was that? I mean, in every small town in Holland, I could have seen the same. But this was Ramallah, and I expected something totally different. And the fact that the expectations and the reality were not the same confused me, and I was open, and what I saw was real life, just the world, and it was beautiful. Well, five years ago, I was in Cyprus for a gig, and uh, I was not really aware of the division of the island with the Greek and the Turkish part. I was in the south side just having coffee on a terrace. And suddenly I heard the mosque from the other world. Just a few hundred meters away, there was the buffer zone and the Turkish part. And it felt so special because I didn't expect it. And I, will, I can put it in wor words, I, I was confused, uh, beauty mixed with a kind of sadness. And I thought, how can I communicate this feeling, this experience? And, um, well, the people who were there, they're used to the situation, so for them it's nothing special. And people who were not there, they couldn't experience it, they were not there. Um, I created a concert. On the rooftops in the town and in balconies and in the streets, about 400 musicians were there. So both sides of the buffer zone. Good. Um, this was a concert, the music was maybe not that special, um, but the situation was very special. And uh, the people who were there, they told me that they had actually never been an hour or more close to that place, this place with just mines and barbed wire and many soldiers. But now they were there and they had a very fresh experience because they just looked at it, they heard it, and they heard something, they saw something that they had never seen uh, in that way. Um, one moment the music went wrong. Uh, some musicians didn't play, they were supposed to play, and I was very worried and nervous. But this silence, the sudden silence, with all the audience just listening and hearing, do I hear music or not? That was maybe the most beautiful part. It was so touching just to hear the birds and the other side. I couldn't have composed that better. Um, but when journalists came to me and they asked me about it, I used words. I told about um, equality, about uh, um, brotherhood, uh, bridging the gap, even peace. But peace is a nice word to use for me, but it's something very different if you live in Cyprus. It means disappointment, it means uh, failure, even hypocrisy. Well, three weeks ago, I was in Jerusalem, the occupied part, the, the, the old town, and uh, I created a, uh, also a project there. Many small concerts in living rooms, and it was a very tense situation because uh, many cultural events were actually uh, abandoned or disturbed by the Israeli army before this year. So, in that situation, we created uh, some mu music as a secret event. And then, journalists came. They asked, oh, that's so great. You bring Israelis and Palestinians together. And I had to disappoint them, and I said, I cannot create peace. I can only create perception. And to create 
uh, a peace project here in this place, actually it will be a symbol for uh, another failure. But to create time, to create a situation where people come together, they listen, they sit down, and they experience their environment just in a fresh way, might create some openness and some contact. Okay, we're here today as uh, United Cleverness. And um, I think we don't need more brilliant ideas. Because we have so many of them, we need a strategy to kind of make them work. And um, the world is already so beautiful, so perfect. Solutions are there, the ideas are there. It just doesn't work out like that. And we need to break through expectations, through our patterns of behavior and our patterns of perception. So you're all communicators. Um, why don't you have the courage to create openness and confusion without filling that openness, the attention of people, right away with your own truth? Because we don't need more empty symbolism. We just need space and openness. And we need to let the subtle confusion, the music of the real world, enter our reality. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>